My name is Livy Michael and I've written 19 or 20 books now for adults and children and young adults and I've written in kind of contemporary realist mode, in fantasy mode and in historical and increasingly I write historical fiction and I've written that for both uh, children and YA and adults. Historical fiction is kind of a huge field now and you can find different categories of it in that field. So you find the books like Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies, which are about the Tudors, about people who are known like Cromwell, and increasingly a huge number of books that tell the untold stories of people's lives, about slaves and people in the workhouse and, you know, the gay community, all those stories that have been left out of history. People are now thinking, you know, really finding a kind of rich seam of storytelling in that, that not only tells the story of the individual, but the story of the societies that kind of left them out. So, and there's also kind of a rich vein of family history storytelling, and then the kinds of histories that overlap with fantasies. So you've got Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, you've got Matt Haig's new book, How to Stop Time, and you've got crime history. It's huge, absolutely huge field. But I think the one thing that links them all is research. And whatever type of historical fiction you want to write, you'll find yourself caught up in the whole fascinating area of research that every historical fiction writer I know loves. They love doing the research, but simultaneously it can be a huge problem. You know, the problem of knowing when to stop, how closely to stick to the facts, just what can you leave out? And that's kind of big questions. The more you go on with it, the bolder you get. You, you have to have a basic respect for the facts because when it comes down to it, the true story, that old saying, truth is always stranger than fiction, that is true. You could not really make Henry VIII up. You know, this man who had six wives and beheaded two of them, divorced two, you know. Your editor would be saying, you know, you're going over the top here. Can he not just have three wives and maybe divorce one of them or something like that? Every historical story you get is, is fascinating and some of them are very strange indeed. And it's often that that makes you want to tell the story. It is often the factual level that makes you want to create the fiction. Um, but I think in the end you get bolder Certainly I'm getting bolder very gradually about not getting caught up for a whole week on, you know, what furniture polish they used in 18th century Lithuania or, you know, checking some source detail about exactly what weapon was used in the killing of Richard, the Duke of York. Because when it comes down to it, you can write most scenes without actually including that kind of thing. And it's a great mistake, which I've done many times in the past, to just end up with file after file after file of research and then be stuck with thinking, well, my God, I think I've lost the story here. I have literally lost the plot. <laughs> I think the quantity bit is always hard and I'm doing these workshops today with the aim of suggesting to people that actually what they need to research is very little. And there is this startling saying that I read somewhere that says research it afterwards. It's a very bold move that. It's not one that I've ever followed. Because as I say, I actually do love the research. You know, I find that fascinating. What I would say is get a story arc for your character that isn't just about the historical facts of the day. So if you're going to write about Elizabeth I, very famous woman, do not just research the whole history of England in the 40-year period of her reign or the 50-odd-year period of her life. Decide on what the story arc of that particular story is going to take. You know, so it might have a trajectory about how she felt about Mary, Queen of Scots, and it might be purely focused on that, or about the man that she fell in love with, or about her early experiences before she was queen. And 
once you know what your story arc is going to be, where it peaks, where it roughly is going to end, you can fit in the research around that. And how much you do is kind of up to you, but I do suggest that in the end, you are going to leave most of it out. And the best thing you can do as a historical novelist is to develop a sense of exactly what you can leave out. Because while we all have that fictional reader in our heads who is going to say, ah, but I know that ships did not use that particular kind of rope in 1864, in fact, that never happens. You know, in practice, it doesn't happen. People are much more, it's much more about whether people are drawn into the emotional content of the story or not. And providing you're not wildly implausible, I think they will go along with it, really. You know, so really don't, when you come up with the questions that you need, it's largely going to be what is the emotional arc of the story rather than particularly what facts go in where. Any number of actual factual books about the Tudors, about Victorian England. Um, it, people get anxious about historical fiction because more than any other genre, it blurs the line between what is true, what is real and what is fictional. But in the end, if you read a novel, you are reading it for other reasons than a biography or, you know, an actual history of the time. You're reading it to be taken into a world and into that character's perspective, basically, and to be taken on an emotional journey. And that holds true whatever period of history you're writing about. I am, in fact, working on another historical novel that brings together both strands of difficulty in research in that it's about Mrs. Gaskell, who's very famous here in Manchester, but about um, a young girl whose case she took up who had landed in the New Bailey prison. So I have, on the one hand, uh, an unknown character. So in theory, I'm free to make things up about her except that I need to make it plausible, I need to know about the context, what might have landed her in prison. And on the other hand, I have a very well-known character who's, you know, much loved. There is a Mrs. Gaskell Society, a lot of people know a lot about her and her books. So, you know, there is in some ways more of a level of research in that. But the core of the book is actually, to me, what was the relationship that developed between Mrs. Gaskell and that girl? And I think that in the end is what people will read it for, hopefully. <laughs>